Basically, um, you have, if you've understood it, you've understood what uh, Gaia is about. So that is like you have this range of points, and you're trying to find the best way uh, to deal with similarity. Um, there's uh, one quick feature I'm not going to show you because it's going to take some time. Then you can also filter some points. So when you you say, okay, give me all the nearest neighbors to this one, you can say, but only the ones that have a value of DPM which is higher than 120, or the ones that have a key as being no major or minor. Uh, same like basically same as you can do it in the in the SQL database. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit more complex example, but the concepts are all going to be the same. That is, I'm going to take my input data set, uh, I'm going to take the information I want out of it, because I will not use all the information that it's, that's in there, and make a distance uh, that's a bit more complex than just a Euclidean distance. I'm going to try to make like a smarter distance or a more complex one. Um, So I'll start from scratch. Uh, I'll go faster on what we've already done, and then I'll go slower when it starts to be a complex. Uh, so the first thing is I get my data set. I load my database, uh, which is called uh, um, Now, uh, what would I want to do? So I'm going to do a PCA of all the, the mean descriptors that I have in my data set because I think that the mean is in, enough, like I don't care about the variance and I'm also going to use um, I very quickly, uh, cool back type blur, so this is a distance uh, when you do the mean and the variance you actually discover lots of information because you're reducing like all your frames and also a single value, you're aggregating all of it uh, Sometimes, for instance, let's say I only want to use the mean of uh, some descriptors. Uh, if all of them are zero, the mean is going to be zero. If half of them are minus one and half of them are one, the mean is going to be zero. So you can see those two are very different cases, but the mean, because like I'm, I'm losing information somehow, I might lose important information. You hope not, but you never know what might happen. Uh, so the cool-back library distance is a distance that does work on the cor correlation matrix. So instead of just taking the mean or just the variance of all your frames, you take the covariance matrix, where it's a lot more information. So if you have, uh, let's say, MFCC, you have uh, 13 descriptors. You have 13 coefficients in the MFCC. If you take the mean, that's going to be 13 uh, values. If you take the variance, that's going to be 13 values. Take the covariance matrix of all the frames, it's going to be 13 by 13, so that's 169 values. It's about, well, it's, not about, it's exactly 13 times more, but you get lots of information that uh, is still compressed because in a song you might have thousands and thousands of frames. You compress this to a 13 by 13 matrix, so it's pretty good. And uh, coupled with the Kubak Lambda matrix, uh, you are going to see it in lots of uh, in the literature, because it's very useful and it achieves uh, very good results, uh, much better than what you would only get with the mean and variance. Uh, so it's kind of a trade-off. I'm saying that uh, for the MFCC, if you look at uh, all the descriptors I have here, um, most of them I have only mean and variance, because I say I assume that they are like limited usefulness to me, or I don't know which usefulness. The MFCC, which we know are quite useful, uh, you see that we have the mean of the MFCC, so that's like those 13 coefficients I'm talking about. 
plus the covariance matrix. So as you see, there's like 13. That's the first line, that's the second line, uh, second row, third row. And that's what you have for the RFC. It's a lot more for the as for the others, but it's also much more useful. Um, so the idea is that with my data set, I'm going to take the PCA of all the mean descriptors on one side. I'm going to take uh, the covariance matrix and the pullback labeler on the MFCC on the other side. I'm going to create the distance, which is a mix between those two. For instance, because you say that the MFCC, you want to have uh, like information that's very relevant to the spectral shape, uh, melodic aspect, and um, the other ones, uh, you want to convey some other uh, aspect. In a more high level example, you could say that you have a distance which is like very uh, based on, on tonal features and another one on rhythm features. And then, for instance, depending on the user, you could change your distance uh, depending on what you want to do. If you want to have something which is more rhythm focused, uh, you just get the rhythm distance uh, as well. So, uh, the first thing is I'm going to prepare my data set. So, uh, on the one hand, I want the PCA. So the first thing I have to do is uh, forget. I'm going to normalize it. So I transform my data set and normalize. Okay. I don't give parameters. Uh, I just want to normalize all the descriptors. Uh, that's that's fine enough for me. Um, yeah, actually, I should have personalized it. So let's let's do it now. Uh, so I said before here I could do it on the normalized or the normal one. That's fine. Uh, and then I do the PCA. So this is just the one taking all the data at the beginning and making a subset which is useful for me. Okay, 
one dimension is the MFC, one dimension is the BPM, and one dimension is the thing. Given that you rotate the whole thing, this doesn't make any sense anymore because each dimension is going to be a mix of lots of others. So the names disappear, so you only get one single big uh, descriptor. Uh, which means that before doing the PCA, for instance, your data set layout was like this. So basically, you have all the same descriptors as the beginning because I only normalized. So if I normalize, if I Gaussianize, I'm not changing which descriptors are in there. Uh, same, I'm only changing the values. Uh, after doing the PCA, looks like this. I only have a single descriptor in my data set, uh, which has 20 dimensions, which is why I asked for. Uh, yes. So this is like a compressed version of uh, my, my original data set. The problem is, uh, if I want to compute the distance, which is a mix between this and the other data that was in the original data set, uh, I need to get them in the same data set. I cannot do it separately. Uh, so what I will do is like uh, my data set with everything. Uh, you have this function which is merge data set, which basically, uh, if you have uh, two data sets, uh, one like that and one like that, it's just going to create one big one, uh, which contains all the data from both data sets. To be able to do this, uh, you have one. Uh, uh, obvious condition is they need to have all the same points. Like they need to uh, well, yeah, have all the same points. Uh, so to merge them, I just uh, merge my uh, <coughs> original data set and the data set that contains the PCA. Okay. And now if I look at the data set all, like the layout of this data set, what it contains, it contains all those descriptors that, was, that were in the original data set, and it also contains this descriptor here, which is the PCA that contains everything. I've, I've joined them together. So now I will be able to do uh, a distance on this data set using both the PCA and the original values. <coughs> As said, there's also ways to import uh, different values in there. From the outside, if you have a different source of, of uh, values, you can create a new descriptor and put it, put it there. Um, so I want two distances. Uh, the first one, I'm going to go with the Euclid distance. Uh, so I could create it like uh, and everything, but to do the linear combination, uh, it's a bit uh, tricky. That's the reason. So again, skip this thing at the beginning. Um, what you want to have as parameters is you want to give a, a parameter map uh, which contains the list of distances you want to mix together, you want to blend together. Uh, and each of those should contain those three fields. The name of the distance you want, to, you want to use, the parameters for this distance, and the weight for this distance. So in my case, let's say that I want to use like 0 0.4 times the UK distance and 0 0.6 times uh, the other distance, the back handler. So instead of creating them separately, because if I create them separately, then there's no way to merge them because they are already created. So I need to specify the parameters like that. Um, so the parameters for my Euclidean distance are the following. Uh, distance is uh, Euclidean distance. Parameters are. Sorry. Uh, I don't want to compute the Euclidean distance on all of them. I want to compute it on the PCA descriptor. Uh, 
it's all descriptor names, not descriptor names, because you can specify a list. In this case, I have only one, but the, the parameter name is still the same. And the weight I want to give it uh, is like zero point. Okay. Now for the coolback library distance, this one, uh, you see that I need to give uh, only one parameter, which is the descriptor name. So in this case, uh, the MLCC, the documentation tells you that you need to have the mean, the covariance, and the inverse covariance. Uh, that's a good thing because it's already in there, because it's such a like the three of them, the first variance, the variance, and the uh, So basically, what I'm going to tell to the Kubak fiber uh, distance that as a distance, I want the Kubak fiber one uh, as parameters. I'm telling that the descriptor name is uh, MCC. And as a weight, I'm going to give it uh, 0 0.6. And now I can create my linear combination. It's going to be descriptor names uh, because you can compute the distance on, on multiple descriptors. So, for instance, uh, you can distance, you can say, I want the Euclidean distance of this, 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 and this descriptor. So, the parameter is called descriptor names, and you can give the list actually to be. Uh, I mean, this works too, but what it is is, is this actually. It's a list. If you want to specify more descriptors here, you could specify more descriptors. Uh, for the pullback labeler, uh, you cannot keep a list of descriptors. I mean, you could, but uh, it's more complex. But because it needs like one descriptor and the mean and the covariance and the inverse covariance, so it's kind of more specific on, uh, let's say, more focused on a single descriptor. So in this case, for the pullback labeler, uh, the parameter name is uh, single. Uh, if, if, if you see the documentation, it's, it's good. But uh, actually, the pullback library is the only one, no, it's one of only two that has this descriptor at uh, singular. All the other distances that I can think of at the moment have it plural. Because you can always specify, like, depending on the distance, you can always specify like a feature vector on which you should apply, uh, except for very specific ones which work like, yeah, only on one descriptor. Uh, all this uh, all the ones that accept this with the name also accept uh, except like if you want to remove from so you say uh, give me all the spectral descriptors so you say descriptor names spectral uh, uh, star asterisk uh, except the spectral central so you put except and spectral central okay so these are my parameters and then for the linear combination Um, so it says you just have to give uh, a map of name. So here the name is not really important, so that's my given parameters. And you give them the parameters. So that's one part of the distance of my linear combination. And this one is the other part. Conceptually, this is just uh, it's very simple. In practice here, it's a bit complex because of the syntax. Uh, so 
that's the reason we're doing this together. Uh, you should be able to uh, do everything with the documentation, more or less, except this one which is useful uh, very often and is not so obvious to write correctly the first time. Um, so, my distance. data set you work. Uh, it's important, so if I create this linear combination distance, I want to create it on the data set I had at the end, which contains um, all the descriptors. You don't want to create it on the first data set because you're not going to be able to... Uh, yeah, the first data set doesn't have the, the PCA descriptor. from outside the data set, uh, you would have distances which are not zero. Here, you get the zero because this point is in the data set, so if you're looking for this point, uh, here, I take it from the data set, but I can take it from outside. I take it from the data set, so it's already in the data set, comes out first, distance zero, because you're looking for this point. Uh, here you see that I have one which uh, has a very similar name, but more than that, has a very low distance. Like you see, the first result is like 0.02. Uh, the next result is 7.7. .7. Uh, this happens because in the database, uh, that uh, this database, uh, there are some files which are, um, they're not exactly copies. I don't know what has been applied to them, but they're, they're duplicates which means they have the same song, you are going to listen to it, they are going to be the same, but um, uh, they are not the exact same file, so the distance is not exactly zero. Um, here, well actually here, you, you can also see that this one and this one, uh, they are about at the same distance as here, because they are the duplicates. Um, so now, if we want to do uh, more advanced stuff, I mean, like, this is all there is to it. I mean, like, we could go on doing more complex distances and everything, but uh, I think I'm, I'm boring enough as it is. Uh, you probably, if you want to do this, or you want to use it for your thesis, you're going to take it with more time and, and go, like, step by step, like, trying the first simple distance and then, like, building more complex distances. Uh, there are some quite complex distances that we can do using lots of uh, higher level descriptors because this here I've been working on Euclidean distance on spectral descriptors which is very low level I mean like it's just like basically values and just Euclidean distance um, 
Uh, Dimitri Bogdanov, for instance, is working on it and using uh, SVM classification probabilities for songs. So the fact that the song is like 60% rock and this, and then using distances on, on top of that, which uh, which have been shown to be to be quite useful and powerful. Uh, but uh, you get to them after, uh, I would say, after a lot more practice. The thing that's uh, interesting to go there is like making useful application of this because the concept is very simple. You just get the closest points. Uh, for instance, I told you before I could do uh, draw classification. Uh, so if you look at this folder, uh, where I have the file, uh, you go very quickly at it. Uh, they are classified in, in, in folders which are the, the draw. Uh, okay. So you would say, uh, well, okay. Uh, well, let's say I find another point which is not the case, like this one. Uh, so if I search for this point, uh, if I don't know the class of this point, I could just say uh, it's the class of the next point. So here, um, very quickly, uh, you don't have to follow me here. Uh, Yes, so, yes, I don't have the folder, so I'm going to create them very quickly. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, in Python there is a module that's called OS, plus lots of stuff. In particular, it has a function OS walk, which uh, recurses into a tree of directories. Uh, so, if you see this, uh, just look at it, uh, not quite necessarily. say from this folder what I'm in, what I'm in. Uh, so it tells me the folder where it goes into and the files that are in there. If you look at the database, uh, the names of the points are the file names uh, without the .c. So here I'm just creating a ground truth really quickly. You don't need to understand what I'm doing, just know that I'm, what I'm going to do is for each of those points, okay, uh, each of those names, I'm going to put the draw in it. So, I go uh, in all those files. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do is that for each of the files, the ground truth of the file minus the four letters, so I minus the extension. If I take uh, the file name, I remove uh, the four last letters, and I say that the ground truth for this is uh, the root folder uh, minus the two first letters. Just so that you know, this is what I have in my ground truth now. So I have all the file names, and uh, they are associated with the draw. They are associated uh, with the draw. So this very quickly. Uh, so if I go back to my uh, distances, I'm Gaia. Actually, let's say so where we. I'm getting a point uh, here. Um, let's say if I want the draw of this, I need to get the closest neighbor. Okay, so I do this, I use my distance. I get uh, actually, as this one is in it, I need to get the second one. So I can only get two results and I get the second one. Okay. Is 
So the closest point to this one, which is not this one, uh, is this one. So it's second element, and I want the name, I don't care about the distance. Uh, sorry. Okay. And then I can look at the ground truth of this file. So for instance, given that I have all this distance which is working very well and that my similarity is uh, working very well, I can do very quickly a function which will get the genre of the point. What it's going to do, it's just going to look for this point uh, using my uh, super distance. It's going to get the result. And actually, it's going to return ground truth of the closest point. Uh, this is just to show you that it's one-liner, uh, it's not very comprehensible, but then you can do stuff like, uh, I want to guess the genre of this point. Well, actually. Yes, it's a function that does all the, all the, the squares at once. Uh, so, booby would be stomp if I look for this. Similar to this song, and because we uh, actually the, the, the distance that I showed you before uh, looks complex, but it's also one that I know works quite well uh, for music similarity. Uh, so it was not completely just to make things complex. Um, the closest <coughs> one to this one, which is in the blues folder, is also a song, I don't know which one, but I, which is also in the blues folder. So it's just like uh, you want to do job classification, you don't want to do SVM or this kind of stuff, you could just say, uh, I don't know nothing about how you do job classification because I don't have a structure that says uh, it's rock if there's like two guitars, a bass, and a drums. You could say, well, just get the closest one, and there's a very high likelihood that uh, if they're similar and the similarity distance that you chose is a smart one or one uh, which is like suited to the task. Uh, uh, you can do this kind of stuff very easily. Um, and I think I'm going to stop here actually. Uh, I need to go further. Uh, quick note about the assignment. Uh, the assignment is going to be the same thing, uh, it's going to be uploaded. Uh, for the assignment, I'm asking you to do a different task, it's to, uh, using the same uh, logic to do something that detects the duplicate in the database. Like in the database that you can download, there's, uh, there are a few files which are uh, duplicate because they have a distance uh, between them which is not zero, but which is nearly zero. So the task is to, uh, to find them. So like for each of the points in the data set, you look if this point has a duplicate, and if yes, you print it, and if no, and the way to do this is the same thing here, you get in distance, so the assignment you just get a simple one. Like you get in distance, you don't need to make anything complex. If you want to do something complex, you're welcome. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's not going to be useful a lot, because what you're looking is, you don't care that your distance is good, as long as it's able to say whether it's exactly the same thing, or nearly exactly, or completely different. Uh, if you do job classification, this is where uh, smart distance works much better because uh, here you get all the, the nuances uh, of the, the values you use. Um, and I think that's it. Any questions about uh, any of this? You can upload this to the site. This is very cool. Oh, yes. Okay. This is yeah. English, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Try to upload maybe a clean version. Ah, you know, something. Um, I know that this uh, Gaia looks a little bit less funky than Essentia. 
me a little bit more abstract. Uh, it is more abstract. The concepts are a bit hard, harder to grasp, but uh, once you get it, after that, it's just a, a matter of like fine tuning, looking which descriptors are useful, uh, and then finding which descriptors. Uh, SVM is not in the distance part, it's in the transformation part. 